You know my life, you have been so, so good, yeah. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice, yes, Lord. You led me through the fire in darkness night. You are close like no other. I know you as a father. I know you as a friend. I will live in the goodness of God. In all my life, you have been faithful. Yes, you have. All my life, you have been so, so good. Yeah, with every breath that I am made, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God oh yeah his goodness is running after it's running after me his goodness is running after it's running after you with my life laid down I surrender now I give him everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. Yes, you have. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, oh, yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Family, be encouraged. Be the glory for great things he has done. For you this afternoon, give condolences to the family of my friend, classmate, my brother. Back in I sat back this week when Jan called me and asked me to speak. I said to her, Jan, I know him long before you knew We have just moved into the good Carmichael back. Where the detention center was, that was our primary school. And so we moved down there in December, but my mom made it sure that in January we would have been attending my tournament, planning and having to go all the way back to and There were two biggity little boys down there at the time, Castell and Rio. And the old Miss Strong put me into And it's just a good time for me to separate them. And so she put me there, and then Castle don't tell me I can't sit in his brother's feet. I said, too bad, you moved from there. And so from then, we, we build a bond between us. 
played softball together because he was on the best softball team back then for those of you softball back then. And so the Michael Rowe was the better because of men or little boys like Castell and his brother Reno. No matter the hardship, they didn't let that stop them. And years later, we united again when we began working at Royal Holiday Club in the township. And we began to reminisce on where God has brought us from. He told me at the time that he was training Beacon and Bishop Rolls Church. And so today we stand here knowing for a fact a man has lived his life. We are not here to put him in heaven or put him in hell. We're here to give God thanks for the life that he has lived. So I say to his father, his mother, his brothers, his sisters, his sisters, his children, his wife. God has been good to Castell no matter what. To the good times and to the hard times. And so we join in fellowship with you today. Castell, we leaned on one another for strength. Remember Big Mark Brown? If Castell knew he was right, he was right. Nothing he could say could change that. And so today we bless God for his life. Paul said, absent from this body, but to be present with the Lord. And cast a laid on his He was there even when Reuben went to visit him in hospital. He spoke about the goodness of God. I mean, it's even to the point where he couldn't talk, but he couldn't shake his head. Some of us may not have that chance. So time is filled with swift transition. None on earth and move can chance and chance. Build your hopes on things eternal, family, and hold to God's unchanging hand. God bless you. The hymn writer says this, there's a city of light where there cometh no night. This is a city of beauty untold. All my treasures up there and its beauty I share when I get to that city of gold. We're going to stand once again and we're going to sing this wonderful hymn when I get to that city of gold. There's a city of light where the comet's no night. There's a city of beauty and soul. All my treasures up there and it's beauty I'll share. When I get to that city of gold, when I need
be the course when I leave. city, that city of gold. We will now invite uh, Bishop uh, Samuel Roll to come and bring his remarks. He will be followed by a tribute that will be facilitated by our media team, and that tribute will be done by the wife of the deceased, uh, Mrs. Marcia Roll. They will come in that order. Pleasant afternoon to the entire bereaved family today. Fathers and sisters. I greet you today in the marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Pay respect to the pastor of this great work, the leadership that's present today. Uh, it's indeed a privilege and a Glorious situation to stand here today to say a few words in regards to my friend, uh, my brother, and oftentimes see my son in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I bless God for my friend and brother, Pastor Minnis that spoke about Castell, the young man, and Castell, Castell, the adult. I would just like to speak for a short while about Brother Castell Roll, the restored redemption that God brought him to. I do believe that in all of our lives, God makes a way of escape for each and every one of us to come to him before we transition out of this world. And so when I said it's a privilege to stand here, because I've had the privilege to participate in this transformation of Brother Castell, I had the privilege to baptize him 
in water baptism. I had a privilege to hear his testimony of where God brought him from, to where God has taken him. And so I want to say to you, uh, the family, and I want to say to his wife uh, that God did a marvelous work that I found in the fellowship with him and the friendship with him. He was laughing and smiling all the time. We had opportunity to travel together on mission in the US and he was always full of gaiety. He demonstrated the joy of the Lord. And, and so even in his stay in uh, Jamaica, we, we, we would talk on the phone and every time he talked, he, he's always joyful, it was a joy. And so I want to say to you today that the memories that cast the life has left uh, is the memories that will bring you through this difficult time. Because as much as we prepare, it will always be difficult. But I want you to know, I again borrow from my pastor, we are not here to put him in heaven, but I want to tell you the time that I know of Brother Castle, he lived a good life in the Lord. Amen. He was a giver, a well, 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 big hearted giver. Amen. And so I want to leave that memory with you because that's why I rejoice that God has brought him to a place where he can transition from no more pain. He can transition from no more being talked about. He can transition. And so as family today, mom, father, and wife, you got to hold on to the hope that Castell live a life. First of all, pleasing to himself, and secondly, pleasing unto God. But it behooves you and I that are here today uh, what preparation that we are making for ourselves for when we all come to this point. Because nothing in the earth will stop you and I from coming to this point. It's Castell time, uh, and it's your family time. Tomorrow can be someone else's time and another family time. And I want to say to all of us today to die without Christ. Hell is a consuming fire. So I want to ask you to be enriched in the memory that he has lived into the earth. And he's gone on to reap his reward. But use this occasion as I leave you today to enrich your life. Enrich, make your life better. And, 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 and some of the times we, we say, man, in order to make your life better, you got to come to Jesus. But God he taught, taught us the difference between good and evil. We don't need Jesus to know when we are doing evil. Make up in your mind that you leave here today that I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to speak to somebody who I didn't speak to. Because the bread that you hold came from God. Make yourself better. Don't just come to this funeral and go. If you love Gaston, say, I'm going to make my life better because he lived this way. And so let me leave you with that. I pray your strength today. I pray the joy of the Lord come upon you as you go through these times. Uh, we just stopped by a few of us, and I greet you today on behalf of the Peniel Worship Center, our senior pastor, Pastor Garnet Sweden. And we just brought a few of our friends and members and minister, Minister Jacqueline Knight, Minister Thomas, and uh, some other members that came along with us today. But people of God, there is a city of gold. Get ready for it. Because we all is going to stand before God. God bless you today. First, I want to give thanks to my Lord and Savior, Yahweh, your lift of my life. This is for you my love. Love always. I've heard of love. I've tried love. I've given her up on love. But God, the I'm a missing God of love, has given me you, my true love. Without his blessings, we could have not known true love. You, when he put us, put you in my life, it was not 
paradise every day. With His grace and mercy that bond us together, during the tough times we have overcome a lot together. We were praying to be victorious in this one too. The good Lord have other plans for you. I have loved you, my beloved, with an everlasting love. Love you as I've never loved no other. You, you have your strong will and many mood swings. I've learned to live with them. You would ask me how I deal with the moods. I would reply, because I love the best of you. Losing you hurt me as part of me has gone with you. Everyone who knows us knew we work together. Your favorite quote, we are a team. We would work as one. We should, even sometimes you get on my last nerves, wanting things done your way. We share chores, I cook in, you'll do dishes, or vice versa. I wash in, you hang out the clothes. I'm ironing, you put the clothes away. My helpmate, my best friend, lover, confident, pain, comforter. A father to my children, son to my mom and father, who affectionately call you Casanova. Brother to my brothers, sister, nieces, nephew, who loved you dearly and loved by our dear I friends. Going to miss you giving me but breakfast in bed, especially when you are apologizing. You never was afraid to say, I'm sorry. Always willing to help anyone you can. You did have a big heart. Going to miss hearing you shouting, Jan, or your voice calling me Janet when you, you are mad with me. My favorite, honey. I'm happy knowing that I was able to give you all the love I could give you. And you saying I'm the best thing that ever happened to you. Your last spoken words to me, love you, honey. And I would reply, love you very much. But you, as you, John, would say, love you more. My beloved, you forever live on in our lives. You have touched many person. My prayer for you is that you made it into our Father's kingdom. Rest, my beloved, until we meet again. Jehovah Elohim, we praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Love always. Rest in peace. God loves you best. Rest, my beloved, until we meet again. Jehovah Elohim, we praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Love always. Rest in peace. God loves you best. We we'll say a special thank you to our CEO who is joining us by Zoom. Even though you could not be here, again, please be assured of our prayers and support during this time and accept our condolences. The second scripture reading comes to us from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. And that will be brought to us by Akil Paul. He is the stepson of the deceased. After he has read the scripture lesson, we're going to have a moment of silence where the obituary will be read in silence and thereafter we will proceed with the program.
Good afternoon. The Gospel according to John, coming from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. Do not let your heart be tr Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a Our speaker today is Pastor Samuel Miller. He serves as the Associate Pastor of the New Providence Seventh-day Adventist Church, along with his lovely wife, Tanya, and their two daughters. Pastor Miller, over the past few years, has demonstrated his call to the gospel ministry not only through great preaching, but by demonstrating the love of God wherever he goes. This great but humble gentleman that will speak to you today considers himself a servant. And while serving, he has distinguished himself in the areas of the ability to plan, to organize, to strategize, but above all, to rightly divide the word of God. Pastor Miller is a graduate of the renowned Northern Caribbean University located in Mandeville, Jamaica. Just completing seminary a year plus and now reaching back to go back to school to improve himself as he, as he pursues his second theological degree. Pastor Miller is one who is a friend to man and also a great person to know. His model is none other than our savior himself, the Lord Jesus Christ. And whenever he opens his mouth, it is always filled with words of encouragement, peace, and hope. And so without delay, I present him to the bereaved family. I believe that God has given him a word for us today to buoy our spirits up. And as you prepare to hear the word today, do so with the understanding that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. 
as Pastor Miller prepares to come to the sacred desk, to give us words from the Holy Scriptures. We invite the inspirational choir to come and give us a musical selection. After we've heard from this great choir, the next voice you will hear will be that of our pastor for today, Samuel Miller. Hear he the word of the Lord.
What does the church say? Heaven will certainly be worth it all. I would just like to say thank you to our senior pastor, Pastor T. Basil Star, for his kind words of introduction and as well as extend my personal condolences to you, the family members, on behalf of my wife, Sister Tanya, and our two daughters, as well as by extension, my family here at the New Providence Seventh day Adventist Church, the officers, and members of this church. I want you to know that our prayers are with you, and our thoughts are with you as well. May God be close to you during this, your time of need. I'd like to say thanks as well to the inspirationals who reminded us that heaven will be worth it all. As this is some, something that we often overlook when we go through our challenges, our crucibles of life. We wonder, wonder sometimes whether there is any worth to living but heaven will be worth it all. I believe that with all of my heart today that heaven will be worth it all. Today we're going to go into God's words and I want you to pray today that God would speak to your heart. Speak to us today in a clear voice that we may hear and obey. If you have your Bibles with you, I just want to read to you from a passage of scripture from the book of 2 Timothy, 2 Timoth Timothy chapter 4 and verses 6 through 8, the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 6 through 8, the Bible declares, for I am now ready, being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all those who love his apparent. Today we're going to speak under the caption, the finality of readiness. The finality of readiness. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, this is your time in the stillness of the moment 
Allow the abiding presence of your spirit to speak. Hide me behind the cross, O oh Lord. Lift up the name of your son, Jesus. Lift up the mighty name of Jesus so that he may be seen and glorified. Through Jesus, amen. amen. The finality of readiness. Paul, as he writes to the young Timothy, his protege, who was about to begin ministry, writes these chilling words. And if you would have taken a glance at the life of Paul, you would have think that he had a squeaky clean resume. But this was far from the truth because Paul's life, apart from the life that he served in ministry, had some checkered circumstances within him that demonstrated that God can do anything with anyone who would surrender themselves to him. Paul, as he writes, one must imagine that he would have been in a deep, dark prison in a Roman jail, awaiting the execution of the emperor Nero. Yet his mind was not on his impending execution, but it, his mind was on the young Timothy and the work of the church. Yes, he had given his all to the work of the gospel. And as I mentioned earlier, you would have thought that he had a squeaky clean pass. Paul, at the inception of his life, was a martyred Christian who sought to destroy the sect of this new group of believers. These were called Christians. This group of Christians sought to represent a different view of society. They had now proclaimed that Jesus was their Lord. No longer was emperor known to them. Their Lord and Savior was Jesus Christ. And they had given their all for him and some even gave their lives for the cause. Some scholars believe that uh, Paul or Saul at that time was so much feared that he was fulfilling the prophecy given in, in Genesis chapter 49 and verse 27. And I'll read the text for you. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 27, it says, Benjamin sh shall raven as a wolf in the morning and he shall devour the prey and at night he shall divide the spoil. Yes, Paul was on a mission to destroy the work of the gospel. But I thank God that one day he had an encounter with the man from Galilee. God met him on the Damascus road and changed the dial of his trajectory. Uh, friends, let me tell you today, there's nowhere you can go that God will not meet you. Wherever you find yourselves, God is already there. You cannot run or you cannot hide from the face of an almighty God. God knows exactly where his children are. And so God met Paul on the Damascus road and changed his life. Paul then became a soldier for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so after years of being battered and torn and uh, giving his life totally to the gospel, he found himself now in a Roman prison and he waits the execution that was about to meet it, be meted out to him by the emperor. And as he was informed of his execution, he was reminded of the church and its work. And friends, today he was willing to die for the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Nothing else mattered to him but to offer his life as a drink offering, to offer his life for the cause. You see, he was the one who was at, uh, stood as they were stoning Stephen. He was present when all of the Christians were taken into arenas and offered uh, as sacrifices. He, he, he participated himself in executing the Christians. And, and now as he sat, he wondered what would become of him and the work. So Paul writes to Timothy, and he says to him, I am now ready. I am now ready. And as he informed Timothy of the readiness of these memorable words, he states that the time of my departure is at hand. You see, it didn't matter to him, his location, his, his, his state of mind was set. Uh, his mind was fixed upon Jesus. He says, I have fought a good fight. And this shows, friends, that this life is filled with trials and circumstances, difficulties, and all manner of maladies. However, uh, we are assured that Jesus is with us. The conflict, the battles that we have to fight daily, the struggles and the wrestling matches of life sometimes weigh us down and we do not know what to do when we are facing these challenges. The last two years for us as Bahamians have been challenging. Coming out of the uh, pandemic, many of us have faced financial and mental challenges. Financial challenges and dealing with the norms of this new norm. But all is not lost because there's one who still watches and deals in the affairs of men. What do you say? God is still dealing in the affairs of men. And he has not forgotten his children. Paul speaks. As you relate in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 and 27. The Bible declares, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool, I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prison more frequently. This was the life of the apostle Paul, in death more often from the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, and let me tell you, if you survived a stoning, Jesus was on your side. Three times I was shipwrecked. And at night and the day I had spent in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles. There's one thing to be opposed by those from the exterior, but when your own forsake you, maybe you can't identify with that. When your own goes against you, you are in trouble. In perils of the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and in toil and in sleeplessness often and in hunger and in thirst and in fasting often and in cold and nakedness. This was the resume of the Apostle Paul. No longer was he uh, the stalwart that went and uh, uh, gathered or corralled the Christians, but this was now his resume. The past was the past, and he now stood as one who represented Jesus himself. Paul identifies uh, who our shrewd antagonist is. He says, finally, my brother, brethren, in Ephesians chapter 6, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord 
and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. He says in verse 12, for we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. But against what? Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, he says, take up the armor of God that ye will be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all, he says, to stand. This was how Paul was able to make it, by standing in the whole armor of God. Many times we get up in the morning and we forget to say, Lord, thank you. We get up in the morning and we jump in our cars, looking good and smelling good, but we forget the God who has been with us during the course of the night. If it had not been for the Lord dispatching his angels to watch over you, where would we be? And yet we walk within the halls of our workplaces and we don't even say good morning to our co-workers as if this breath belonged to you. Someone says, if you didn't know, now you know. It was not your alarm clock that got you up. But it was the quickening power of Jesus that woke you up. This morning. And I'm glad heaven didn't ask. Where did you where would where did you go last night? Jesus didn't ask, what did you do last night? Or, or where did you go last night? But he woke you up this morning. In spite of our wretchedness. Paul said the way I made it was I put on the whole armor of God every single day. This is how I made it. 2 Corinthians 9 and 26 says, do you not know that those who run in this race all run, but one receives the prize? Run, he says, in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who completes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for the imperishable crown. Therefore, he says, I run thus not with uncertainty. Thus I fight as one who beats the air. Paul says, everyone must run this race. Make no mistake about it, friends. We all must run this race. There's no if. Maybe hands or bus, we must get in the race. Some of us are still saying, no, not today. I have some things to do. I have some things to accomplish. I cannot serve Jesus right now. I got too much things going on in my life. Not today, Jesus. I'm not talking to Brother Castell today because he can't hear me. He can't respond to the words of the Lord, but, but, but for the living, for those who have this breath running warm uh, in your lungs, for those who have the blood running warm in your veins, this word is for you, the living. Paul says, I am now ready. And the question comes back to us today. Are you ready? Are you ready? It says, we must run this race. And each participant is responsible for his lane. I can't run for you. And you cannot run for me. But we must run this race. We must run. He compares his ministry to a foot race. 
And he felt that he had the reason to believe that he had fulfilled his duty to God and man. What is life if it is not given in service to God? What is your life if it is not given in service to God? I said a couple of weeks ago, I wish I'd given my life to Christ much earlier. When I was younger and stronger and I had a lot of energy, I wish I had given my life to Christ much earlier. When you get old, and I should say older, when you get older, you can't move as the, as the younger persons move. They have a lot of energy. I have a little nephew that just that is visiting us from Freeport. He's three years of age. And, and to keep up with him now is like, I have to tie a rope onto my hand and, and the other onto his hand just to keep up with him because he's always on the move. And I often say to him, do you know that my youngest daughter is 16? I don't have to run after her, but I have to run after you all day. So you and I, who have squandered our years, who have wasted the precious years of our youth, who have spent time in the galleys of Satan's parlor, who have been uh, in places where you may have been ashamed of. But today, the question comes to us, are you ready? What if God asks us about our resume? Not that he doesn't know our life's trajectory. What if God asks us about our, traject our, our, our life's our work? What if he asks us uh, today, are you ready? What will be your response to your God today? Paul had no qualms as to where his faith lied. Even in a stink a Roman jail filled with rats and rodents, he was resolute that he was now ready and his time of departure was now at hand. And he was not speaking about leaving the jail or being released. He knew that he was at the end of the line. Many of us, we think that tomorrow is guaranteed to us. We plan and we, and, 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 and we put together uh, 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 plans in our lives because we think that we will be here next week. Who told you that next week you will be here on this planet? Who told you that next month you will be here? Where did you get that news from? That is why we live day by day surrendering ourselves to God. It used to be today for me and tomorrow for you. But we moved into today. Today you may see Pastor Miller, but this evening it's no guarantee that I will be here. That's the reality of life. Today for me and today for you. Today, yes, today. That's how fleeting life is. So Paul offers counsel to the young Timothy. He says, the time of my departure is at hand. And Paul says, I have kept the faith. His faith was not in the political government of the day. His faith was not in the political parties of the day. His faith was not in the financial status of the country of today. His faith was not in his family members. His faith was in Jesus. Where does your faith lie today? Is it in your job? Is it in your employment? Is your faith in your political affiliation? Nobody can make 
promises like Jesus do. You see, Jesus doesn't make empty, empty promises. Men do. The Bible says the arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. In other words, you cannot even trust your own self with yourself. Preacher, am I talking to you can't trust yourself with yourself. We speak of individuals. She is such a nice person. He is such a nice individual. You can't uh, meet anyone that's more uh, kind-hearted than he was. But the next day, you do not know what they're capable of. And then your statement goes from he was such a good person or she was such a good individual but look where she finds herself we are all in a sense crooks we are all in a sense crooks sinners saved by the grace of Jesus there is none righteous let me say something. If so there are some persons in here who think that they have arrived, let me share something with you. All that you have done is filthy, is as filthy, filthy rags. There is none righteous among us. No, not one. But for the blood of Jesus. But for the sacrifice of Jesus, we cannot boast in our own righteousness because it is Jesus through him and in him that we have life. It is he that sustains us. It is in Jesus. Paul had no qualms because his now faith was resolute that he was ready. And he was looking forward to the blessed hope of Jesus. We ought not to be looking for better days. But we ought to be looking to the kingdom of heaven. For a government that's not corruptible. For uh, uh, a government uh, that, 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 that ensures that, uh, that, 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 that we are, have the security of eternal life. No earthly government can ensure eternal life to no human being. Let me say that again. No government can guarantee eternal life. But eternal life comes through Jesus. He is sovereign. He is our savior. He is the one who goes between heaven and earth. And when we look to him, he says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will show you great and mighty things. They that call upon the name of the Lord, the same shall, shall, shall be saved. Apostle Paul says, I know it may seem as if all my life's work may have come to nothing. I'm sitting here in a Roman jail. I have preached in your pulpits. There were many who were baptized. There were many who heard the, heard the true words of the gospel, but rejected it. And now you see me in a Roman jail and you may think that all is lost. But here comes the good news. He says, I have a reward coming for me. And that is a crown of righteousness. Which the Lord shall give me at that day. I have a crown of righteousness awaiting me. If you fail to acknowledge the gospel that I have preached, it doesn't matter. Because God will reward me. 
Sometimes we get disappointed and discouraged because of where we are in life, because of our experiences. But God says, I got something for you. I have something for you. To those who would prove faithful, I have something for you. This is not a plaque that you can put on your wall. This is not a bouquet of flowers. This is not some card signed by all of your coworkers. This is an incorruptible crown of righteousness. And the crown of life awaits those who are faithful to him. This is the reward for finishing. So Paul gives the analogy of the crown. And in the, in, in the culture that Paul uh, existed in, uh, the Greek games of uh, victorious athletes were awarded the crown of laurel branches. And this was placed on the heads of those who won the race. Paul says, now, I have come to the end of my race. I will not get a fading laurel crown, but I will receive a crown of life which the Lord will give me on that day. I look forward to that crown of life, which the Lord himself would place upon my head. This one will not fade away. This one is not corruptible. It's not made of human components. But this one is made by the hands of my creator. And I will not have to do any fitting for the crown. My head is a big head. I have a big head. But the Lord knows the circumference of my head. And he already has a crown made up for me. Every head uh, in here, God knows uh, the circumference of your head. So he has a crown awaiting for you. But you will not receive a crown if you're not in the race. If you're not in the race, you will not receive a crown. Some of you can testify after going through hell and high water here on earth. And to miss the eternal crown, to miss out on eternal life. To miss out on eternal life. I thank God that he gives rewards. And not based on my merit, but based on the merits of Jesus Christ. You see, the crown was also a recognition of the right to honor and glory by, uh, the, uh, by the wearer. The right came from the just judge. God is qualified to give the rewards. Here's why. Because he did not just give rewards. He came here and ran the race with us. You know, there's some people who say, I don't do what I do, but do as I say. Jesus says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He says, follow me. So he ran the race on our behalf. And if you believe that he was half-stepping, he went all the way, all the way to Calvary. He lived a perfect life so that you and I can have this perfect life through Jesus. His life for my life. Yes, he placed his life on the line for me. And he says, no man taketh my life because I laid my, down my life. Jesus offered himself on behalf of humanity so that we can have a right to the tree of life. What do you say? We live today not because we are healthy or we are strong, we are capable. We live today and exist because of Jesus. And the crown is not given to us immediately because Paul himself was waiting on the crown, but it was laid up for him. It was waiting for him. It was waiting for him. And all of those who would prove faithful, it was waiting for him. Some people think that the crown of glory is given at death, but no, we await the crown of righteousness and Jesus will return with our reward. It will be given on that day, the day when Christ will bring with him his reward to all who are faithful to him. And this will be at the second coming. 
Revelation 22 and verse 12, the Bible says, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. So Pastor Stirrup, you're not gonna leave me behind. Ah, uh, I held the dirty road, you're not gonna leave me behind. And uh, no one will leave me behind because I intend to receive my reward. And that is to all who are faithful. Paul looked at his crown and he says, my time, his departure is at hand. Could you imagine if you knew when that time would be for you or I? Could you imagine if you knew when your time would come to an end? What would you do? And if you cannot answer, then you cannot say that I am ready. If you cannot answer, then you cannot say I am ready. Apostle Paul said resolutely, I am ready. Today, today, so Apostle Paul spoke from a Roman jail. He was not expected to see the light of day anymore. But he knew that a crown of righteousness was awaiting him. Today, a crown of righteousness awaits all who are faithful to Jesus. And if we are faithful, if we are faithful, we will meet our loved one on that day. If we are faithful, we will see those who would have passed on on that day. I anticipate meeting with Jesus. I anticipate looking full in his wonderful face. I anticipate the day when death itself will die. No more will we have funeral services. And sad to say, funeral directors, as great and awesome job as you're doing, you will be unemployed. You will be unemployed. But hey, a new life awaits all those, all those, all those whose lives are surrendered to Jesus. Today, friends. I bring you words of comfort that we can be ready. We can be ready, not tomorrow, but today. The Bible declares today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Today, today is the day of salvation. I pray today that the voice of God is heard in your life. May we accept him. May we make our calling an election short today. Make this your moment today. The moment when you reconcile yourself to Jesus. Today. Then we can say like the Apostle Paul, I am now ready. So if you call my name today, I am ready. I am ready. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, these were your words spoken to us by your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for making every provision available for us to accept you today. We are left without an excuse today because we have heard your voice today we pledge oh god today that our lives will be surrendered to you i pray oh father that every voice every ear every mind that have heard your word today may uh, surrender themselves to you if they have not already done so may we reconcile our differences with you and say yes lord yes 
to your will and to your way. Yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and I will obey. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree and my answer will be yes. Lord, yes. Make this our plea today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank Pastor Miller for those timely and powerful words that remind us of the importance of being ready today. We also want to thank him for the prayer for the family. At this time, we invite everybody to stand for the processional hymn, Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. As we sing these three stanzas today on the second stanza, the platform party, We'll disembark and we will leave the casket out of the church, followed by the family members, and the rest of you will be ushered out. Let us stand as we sing lustily the song, Precious Lord, take my hand and lead me on. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am warm. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand. Lead me home when my way grows there, when my way.